episode. Uh, there we go. So we're recording now, although I can't see it actually recording anywhere. I think you can see your screens. And I'm going to show you what you probably want to bookmark today. I'll usually give you something to bookmark. Bookmarking, I think, is going to be a huge time saver if we do it correctly or efficiently or effectively because we're trying to keep track of all of these different things that we're going to whether it's modern teacher or you're trying to go into a certain slide presentation or like this matrix that i have or all of these presentations because i'm starting already to upload the live recordings i've already put up this morning's live recordings so trying to keep track of all of those links is all already putting me asunder so um i'm gonna have you first do that let me admit people and i'm gonna grab the link for the matrix if you've already bookmarked the, the matrix somewhere then that's fine um, but i'm gonna put that in there for you so that means i have to hit escape to make my screen smaller i have to answer the doorbell it's like having a party and people just keep coming in all right escape and we are in our brainstorming session for MMHS. It was supposed to be quashnet at this time, but um, with the schedule, when I read the schedule afterwards, I'm like, uh-oh, they're gonna be busy. So I switched it around. What was I doing? I was getting the link for the matrix. So that's here. That's this link. Let me move um, this link up here. It's funny when you're hosting, you have so many pictures and chat boxes and doorbells in your way. And now I'm going to go back to our Zoom. Why does it say sign in? It shouldn't say that. I'm going to go back to here. Well, you guys are all there. Why? <laughs> Why is it asking me to sign into a Zoom and I'm already in it? Oh, let me stop share for no, I think I can do chat from here. Sorry. I'm going to struggle in different ways in every group, I guess. More. Let me do this. I'm going to hit stop share. Start from scratch. See, there's chat in here. Look at all of you chatting, saying hello, introducing yourselves. I'm glad you did that. That's the link to the slides. If what happens in the last session happens again, anybody that I let in after now, they might not see that link. So if anybody who's really nice, when people say, where's the link, will you please post it for me so you can copy it and then vomit it back into the chat for people who come in afterwards. Um, that's the link to the matrix, which you will need to kind of refer to all week. I'll be linking a lot to it. So whatever system you use for bookmarks, whether it be efficient or not, mine is not efficient right now. I have to think of a new system for this fall because my old way of doing things is not cutting it. So maybe that'll be something I include in one of these courses, probably tomorrow in file management. Anyways, if someone comes in and they need the link to the matrix and they don't see it there, will somebody please copy it and glue it back in? That would be awesome because I am having a hard time keeping the list of kids and the text going all at the same time. So now let me go back to sharing my screen. And I'm clicking Chrome and I'm hitting present. All right, so we are in a brainstorming session for MMHS, not Quashnet. I switched them up. I already said that. I know I'm repeating myself. And let me get my list of people up. There we go, in case the doorbell rings. I decided to do this at the beginning of our whole series of PD because I know that so many of you have spent the summer with your brains consumed about what you could do, what you could provide for your students, um, looking up resources, looking up all kinds of new ideas, what it was that you were going to be able to use this coming fall. And I've heard <laughs> the, um, the saying that the smartest person in the room is the room. So I'm certainly not going to be your sole source of information. I just don't have that to be able to provide, but um, we'll be able to share all of that together. I actually, my preferred way of thinking about this is the Wizard of Oz, like Oz was supposedly the holder of all knowledge, but we find out at the end that Dorothy and the Tin Man and the Lion and the Scarecrow had it in them all the time. So we know that you already have it in you. We're just trying to bring it out over these next two weeks. 
So you'll find if you weren't in my classes earlier or sessions earlier, you'll find that I'm going to use the same type of format every time. We are always going to start with some kind of compelling preview, which I kind of just half did. I still have to get used to my own system. But the best way for us to come up with good ideas is to come up with lots of them. So today is a chance for you to be able to share what you've been seeing or finding or trying or anything in that regard. And then at the end of the 10 days, we'll get back together as a district and kind of look at what it is that we've done since today. So I'm going to start you off with a video and this one comes at you from Apollo 13. Let me hit play. Okay, people, listen up. Just some time. I want you all to forget the flight plan. This moment on, we are improvising a new mystery. Sorry. Well, sorry. How do we get our people home? There you are here. We turn them around, straight back, yes. direct the board. No, 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 sir. We get them on a free return trajectory. An option with the fewest question marks for safety. I agree with Jerry. Use the moon's gravity slingshot them around. No, the level will not support three guys for that amount of time. Barely holds. I mean, we've got to do a direct abort. We do an about face. We bring the guys right home right now. Get them back soon. Yeah. Absolutely. We, we don't even know if the Odyssey's engines even work, and if there's been serious damage to this spacecraft. They blow up and they die. That is not. Oh, what are talking about time, right? not oh, whether or not these guys. Let's hold it down. Let's hold it down, people. The only engine we've got with enough power for direct support is the SPS on the service module. Well, Lovell has told us it could have been damaged in an explosion, so let's consider that engine dead. If we light that thing up, it could blow the whole works. It's just too risky. I'm not going to take that chance. The only thing the command module is good for is re-entry, so that leaves us with the LEM, which means free return trajectory. Once we get the guys around the moon, We'll fire up the LEM engine, make a long burn, pick up some speed, get them home as quick as we can. Gene, I'm wondering what the what the Grumman guys think about this. We can't make any guarantees. We designed the LEM to land on the moon, not fire the engine out there for course correct. Well, unfortunately, we're not landing on the moon, are we? I don't care what anything was designed to do. I care about what it can do. So let's get to work. Let's lay it out. Okay. I love that video. Can you guess why I shared it? What we were trained to do, what school was designed to do is certainly not what we are going to have to do in the coming hopefully only one year. Um, but I think it can forever change the way we will do things. I think it's an opportunity. They came home safely and we're going to get through the years safely. I see that parallel as well. So every class that I have, I'll have some kind of riveting video. I will also give you, some, in the YouTube class, I'll give you some ideas on how to find videos that are shorter and more fast paced and more compelling so that they can keep attention. There's a lot of boring videos out there. Don't let yourself be one of those people that chooses them. Oh, Scam Likely is calling me right now. Okay, so let me see, next page. So. What I want to be able to do today is we're going to go to a shared Google Doc and we're going to talk about things that you've already thought of and they might not be the end all be all solution that will fix things for everybody, but we're hoping to start to collect some ideas and as I put together these courses things that you share today might be things that I'm able to share with others during the courses as the next two weeks go on. So things that have been on my mind is logistics organization and how those work. I think that that's really the key to everything is how the logistics come together. But also there are amazing resources out there. There's tools that can be used on the Chromebooks and also plenty of websites. So the way that this is going to work today, I'm going to go to the next screen. On every course, what I'll be providing is a list of resources. It'll be in a collaborative Google Doc and you'll be able to access it during and after that course. I have not put any in for this particular course because I want those exhaustive resources and ideas to come from you today. And we'll do a combination. We're gonna go to that doc in a second, which I think I've started to put the link in there, but I'll put a better link in a second. Um, 
I'm going to want us to go in there and you can either share out loud. We were able to do that with the group at KCC. They shared ideas uh, verbally, but they also typed them in. And we had, we had enough time to be able to also do some Q&A, whether it was about logistics for their school or what questions they had about what was coming up. So hopefully that's how we'll spend our hour. My goal will always be to stop at 10 minutes of the hour so that if you're doing more than one course with me during the day, you have some downtime in between them. So it's kind of like a therapy session where you don't go for a full hour, you only get 50 minutes, even though you pay for an hour, except for I'm free. So I'm going to click on that article, which I believe I already have it open. Do I? No, that's the terrified one. That's a good job, Susie. You have the wrong one linked. So don't click on that. <laughs> I'll have to fix it. I'll put this link into the chat, which I can't find right now. That's the part I'm really struggling with. Like, where is the chat when you are sharing your screen full screen? If anyone knows, unmute yourself and save a girl. Chat. Oh, never mind. I found it. It was under more. <laughs> Thank goodness I'm not afraid to click on stuff. Okay. That is the link to the shared Google Doc about brainstorming. And just to say something ad nauseum, you are going to come in and you'll see KCC has already started to put some stuff in there. And we're gonna scroll down past Quashnet because they were supposed to be before you and you guys are at the bottom. So either start typing in some great ideas that you found or seen or links to stuff, or you can turn on your microphone and we can share that way or you can do both. If you say something awesome, I'm probably gonna tell you to type it into the document. If you can't get into the document for whatever reason, no stressing, um, just put it into the chat and then somebody nice will paste it into the doc for you. I've got one for you. Go for it. It's called whiteboard.fi. Oh, I heard this before, go ahead. Okay, have you seen that one before? I've seen it because you shared it in another. Okay, yes, that. so I wasn't sure it didn't come out to everybody. Um, basically, it allows the teacher to set up a free account. Oh, okay. have the kids sign in and right, their okay. computer becomes okay, a whiteboard that they can right. um, write on. And you as the teacher will see every single one of their little whiteboards on your screen so that you can do something um, that you don't have to touch or collect in that sense, but you can watch them do their work. That's awesome. And what's even better is you don't have to do that while you're in a Zoom. Correct. Right. And I'm going to say so that again. You can be walking around and yeah. doing this, and, and the kids at home can also be doing this at the same time so you can see what they're doing. Right. You don't have to be in Zoom while you do it. I'll let some of you wrap your head around that idea because not everything has to be through Zoom. I think that's huge. Oh, I'm trying to let people in too. Suzanne, that's awesome. And you just put the website in there. So that's helpful too. You're all oh, right. Somebody else did. I'll give them credit. I, so. <laughs> Thank you. I was going to share that on the library um, day, the whiteboard site. And I don't know if you mentioned, I'm sorry, I couldn't hear for a minute. But I also, you can save all of their responses in a PDF um, when you're on that whiteboard site. That's awesome. Love it. Suzanne, can you explain the application of it again? I'm sorry, what, you want, what do you want me to explain? Like how you'd use it? So I, I don't know if you can see the one that I have right here. That it's, it's, it comes up and the you, it's kind of like playing a game. It's kind of like uh, some of the ones that we, we normally do, like um, I do gym kit, but you guys tend to do uh, play Quizlet, but all the kids are signing in at the same time and you've got kind of the master board here in front of you. And as the kids sign in, their little box shows up on the screen so that you've got all these little whiteboards on your screen and you can see what the kids are typing in, presumably with a Chromebook, if they're using something else, they can actually hand write into it. So if they're at home and using a cell phone, you might see uh, their handwriting coming across and they, you can have them responding uh, in live time. Is that helpful? 
Yeah, Sabine, can you speak over that? Like, as you're on that whiteboard, can you hear each other talking? And solely when you're writing on the whiteboard, you're just seeing visual. It's like the old, fa it's solely writing, as far as I know. You'll have to ask Lynn if there's any other component. As far as I know, it's just writing. And it's kind of like a digitized version of, you know, when we had the whiteboards that the kids would hold up their responses. So it's kind of doing that on, on a computer. Yeah, I think it's only writing. I, my thought was that you could use it on Zoom with the kids that are at home and the kids in the classroom at the same time as well. Yeah, they, they don't necessarily, you don't even need to have you, Zoom oh, going Oh, no, you don't that. need to, yeah. No, no, you can just kind of like have, have it written underneath um, your lesson plans for the day at, you know, at this time, sign in, and they, they can be working at the same time as everybody else in your classroom. I think that's awesome. Um, a question in the chat is, what's the expectation for remote students? Are we allowed to have them work with in-person students during the class or do we have to give them independent assignments? Whether you students are fully remote, like they're never coming in or they're just this week they're not in and you know they'll be back next week, you definitely can pair up kids that are there, kids that are everywhere, kids that are, whatever you need to do. So there's no expectation that you need to keep them separated. Um, I think that they work together the better. So that's a good question. Um, if you there we go, what else? Um, oh, Carrie, I don't think you deleted anything. I deleted the words that said type here just because by then you guys had figured out where to type. And you agree, yeah, you're going to pair up students. I think that's a good idea, especially with so many Google tools being um, collaborative. They've probably been doing that anyway in your classes. So now it's just going to be done in a different way. And they don't have to be on video or on camera to be able to do that. Um, it can be done. It's not like it can't, but if you're trying to minimize the amount of time that they're, you know, on camera and stuck and glued to the computer in that way, you can have them work collaboratively just in a Google Doc or in a Google Slideshow. Um, Another, go ahead, Brian. Another tool that is sort of similar to Suzanne's in that it allows for kind of frequent checks for understanding, which probably is, is a good thing, kind of getting more interactivity, especially for the kids who are at home, is poll everywhere. Um, so you can kind of set up questions that are, are like a poll, but they can be multiple choice or false. And I think, I think you can do short answer and it'll give you responses and you can kind of build them into, you can either send them out to students via the chat in Zoom or you can build them into a slide deck and have kids answer them as they, if they're like, they're kind of progressing through a slide deck. And similarly, once you get your paid Zoom account, we're waiting for Zoom to set them up because we requested so many accounts, I guess they're backlogged. So it might be another couple of weeks before your paid account is in, which the two features that you'll be waiting for are being able to report to the cloud and being able to use their polling features. So they're not as fancy as Poll Everywhere, but they're good to use as well. May I ask a question? Absolutely. Um, when it, excuse me, of course I just shoved candy in my mouth. When um, we're using the Zoom, do I we don't just, think that's okay. oh, oh, hang on, I'm just, whoever's, if you're not talking, I'm just going through to see if you're, un, so right now, all right, I think I muted everybody, I think. But if you're not muted, go ahead and mute yourself until it's your turn to talk, because then we don't get as much feedback as much as I love hearing a cacophony of voices. Yeah. <laughs> Go ahead. So when we do, when we are um, Zooming with our students mm -hmm. who, are, who are remote and the students are in front of us, are we supposed to set up, you know how we had different meetings for whatever time and we had to do a daily time? Are we just doing it for like the whole school day? Oh no. Let me just have a one open meeting and that way the kids come in and out. I don't think so. Um, I think that, that that would give us all screen ex exhaustion trying to manage that. I think that we're going to have a better idea of what it could look like even by the end of this week because I'm going to be teaching remote, not remotely, I'm going to teach in person tomorrow at KCC then quashing it on Thursday and I'll be back here. I'm going to plan on trying the library here on Friday. 
so that we can see what it looks like to have some people online and some people in person. And I'm going to learn really quickly how much direct instruction I can give live as Susie right now, or how much I should record ahead of time, have you watch and then try to work to take questions and work more individually or give you things that you can do on your own while I circulate, whether I'm circulating through the computer or through the classroom. Um, I think we're going to have a much clearer idea of what's possible, what's challenging, what's crazy. I think it would be hard to have your Zoom open all day long. Um, you will get a doorbell, like a notification, if a child is trying to get into your room. So right. your email will send you something saying, oh, Susie's trying to get in. So if you want to then send an email back to that student and say, you know, from, you know, I'll be back online at one o'clock or stop in, I'll keep it open, you know, from two to two twenty, whatever it is, you have that flexibility. I don't want to say there's only one right way to do this because I don't even know what the right way is. That's the question. Like since the since it's a block schedule, like right. okay, um, you know, every morning from whatever time to do like four different Zoom times. Mm -hmm. You know, and that maybe I'm just wondering because if we had it open all day, then it's the same one, and the kids don't have to look for a specific. Oh, a specific link. You're right. Like yeah. I'm using the same link for this. Go ahead, Amanda, because you guys think differently because you're, it's hard to go from school to school and picture what it looks like. So share. When you set up in Zoom this summer, and I did for the robotics team, but I'm not sure if it would work with our block scheduling, you can set up the same Zoom and give the one link that will then repeat for multiple dates. So you would have to plan in advance. But you may be able to do like the two weeks for the first of the month that are the A, B schedule and then do a second set of Zoom meetings, I'm thinking for the B, A week schedule for two weeks. So that way on your landing pad, the Zoom link stays the same, but it gets associated for each class's time when they meet. So you're not going to have to change your landing pad Zoom link you would just keep the same Zoom link for the week and it would have the times associated and the dates associated with it. Does that make sense? It does. Because I know like when I had my tech therapy during our law, uh, shutdown, I had two different standing meetings. So you'd have the same one always at 10 and the same one always at three. So if you were someone that only comes at 10, you don't even need to know what the other ones are, but it's always the same every day. That kind of. Exactly. Yeah. You might only have, what, you might only have five, you would only have four Zoom links set up for all of your four classes that you're teaching, or five classes that you're teaching, sorry, five classes that you're teaching, and that would stay the same. And I think you can go in and edit as, um, the time goes on and add more dates to that link. Yes, like I think you can do a month out at a time. Yep. You guys are putting some great tools in there. If you want, if you can't see because I keep scrolling, you can always go into this document yourself. It's um, located just to refresh your memory if you're on the matrix and we are in the MMHS hybrid brainstorming, so that's slide 17. When you're in slide 17 over here where it says click here, that's what gets you into the, oh, wait a minute, I did it wrong, didn't I? That's what, this is the group that it went to a different one. Here, let me fix it while we're sitting here. Share an idea if you want to, I, I will just type. <laughs> let me go here, brainstorming. Copy, blended PD schedule. Well, after looking at that AB schedule, like which week is it, you know, the Falcon and the MASH P week and everything. You'd be hard pressed to fit, to do a recurring meeting because it makes no sense. Oh, I know what you're saying. Cause it, it doesn't flow. Mm -hmm. And I'm highly annoyed because I'm a very, burp, burp, burp. Yeah. <laughs> I like a B nope. a B <laughs> don't give me any free verse. <laughs> period one always meet first thing in the morning on an a day like we don't have the the block rotation am i wrong 
Yeah, she agrees. But the other thing I'm thinking too is that I could open my 10 a.m. meeting at any time. I had it scheduled for 10, but if I wanted to go in there at one o'clock and open like that session, I could. It didn't have to be at 10 a.m. If that makes sense, Trish? Yeah, so we could just put in any old time as long as it's Daily. period one and then yep. period five. Yep. So it'd be the same link, it'd be recurring. Yep. Gotcha. Yeah. Yep, and as the, the Zoom host, you would go in and either open today's or open tomorrow's. It doesn't really matter. It opens the same room at whatever okay. time of day. Got it. I just needed think time. <laughs> Does anyone know if where we're using like Zoom or some sort of attendance, you know, we have to do attendance, right, for the kids here and at home. What are people thinking for attendance, like, that it's going to be quick and easy. Is it going to be Zoom in the first, you know, 10 minutes of class? I, I was considering putting like a Google form with a little check-in, like a daily attendance kind of thing. And then you have it saved to a spreadsheet. And you can even just have like just a general question, like is anything you want to tell me about or, you know, some sort of like SEL kind of thing with it. But I, I mean, I wasn't set in stone. I was just trying to think of different ideas. That's why it's a brainstorming session. I've been trying to think of the same thing. I was trying well, to no. this is tricky. Go ahead. Do we have to have it done by a certain time? Like um, the attendance, that was a question I had. So, you know, I don't want to open up a can of worms. So are we marking kids tardy? if they're at home and they're not coming in, you know, until 20 minutes or a half an hour when class has started. No, then they're tardy. That's the expectation is that they show up on time. I'm hardcore. I agree. So that means that form gets done in the first 10 minutes of class. Yeah. I like it. <laughs> But if we have to have them, like, if we have to check in with them on Zoom at the beginning of the class period anyway, so why wouldn't you just do your attendance right into PowerSchool at that time? You know what I mean? I feel like putting it on a Google form and then having to go transfer it into PowerSchool is, like, going to add an extra step. That's you know what I mean? Work. It might be a good question. Plus, um, couldn't a student just fill out the form and not be in class? Right. Well, that, that was the question I had too about, like if they have to check in with Zoom, they kind of have to have their camera on because like I could pay my little sister to sign into Zoom and just turn the camera off if I wanted to. I didn't realize I was unmuted. I'm trying to type the response to Tim. Yeah, the expectation that Patty put out there that she's going to have all of the parents, you know, that whole thing was that the camera is on, they're dressed appropriately, they're in the right spot, um, and they're working. <laughs> the pajama so they, thing is kind of weird, though, because some of the kids wear pajamas to school, so I don't really care yeah. <laughs> they pajamas. But they can't be sitting on their bed or whatever. They have to be in a, like, a workspace type thing. Well, those were the suggestions. Right, that was on Patty's document. Yeah, Zoom etiquette. Yep. Is there any concern that, I, I'm just throwing it out, if every single teacher is Zooming at the first 10 minutes of class to take attendance, that we may have a problem all seeing all of our students, the, the whole camera? I know. I. Sean and I have talked about it. We're gonna see how it goes. We can't, we can't, test that until we actually do it. So we're going to see how it goes. And I know that we've increased the capacity of not only incoming, but outgoing as well. So the highway coming in is bigger and the highway going out is much bigger. So hopefully that's what we're, hopefully <laughs> we will find that out. There are some things that you just won't know until we do them. Kind of like me doing these classes today. Woo. So yes, we've given it a lot of consideration. I 
I know if we try to do a test run, it's hard to do it without the, the magnitude of all those kids. That's the part that's tricky. Like we could do a test run. We're doing test runs all of this time with all of us, even yesterday doing our um, commencement day. That was a huge test of all of us streaming in and out at the same time. Like that, that was a lot of bandwidth that we were using. So Sean, I'm sure has an idea of what capacity we used at each of the three schools. So that was that was an excellent test. And even though there were some, you know, burps along the way, for the most part, it was a pretty good experience. So I was happy. You guys are putting in more all kinds of tools in here. Um, I love Nearpod, Edpuzzle. A lot of people have been writing to me about Edpuzzle in the last couple of days, being able to layer in questions into an existing video or a video that you make. It can be customized. And that way they're answering questions as they go along. It's not just mindless watching of videos, which is nice. Not, not to you know toot my own horn, but I'm an Edpuzzle coach. Ooh. So I did their, their training, so I've got a bazillion videos on there. That's awesome. I don't know if they've expanded it, but you can, I have folders of videos, so I don't know if that kind of psychs out the website. So you're only supposed to have like 30. But that's cool. So if you have questions, you know who to go to. Uh, let's see, I'm still reading through. Um, classroom Q, I haven't used that. If whoever put that in there wants to share, that would be awesome. Sorry, that was me. Um, it is a website where the kids can log on and type in their questions. So for me in the library, when I would have like a class of kids when I had digital citizenship and then kids that might have been coming in and out, it helped me to kind of organize and see who needed me next. And they can log on from home or from in your classroom and type in their, you know, their questions to you or, um, do I have it open? Well, you could go to the link and, and see. Is it um, something, can they see each other's questions? Or it's they a website. I think they can. I think you could set it either just to you or, yeah. Um, and then like I would have it on the clear touch. So when I got to one of the students, I'd just like tap it and it would, you know, I could move on. It just helped me organize and multitask a little. That's awesome. Go formative is another awesome um, tool. There's so many out there that allow you to do the whole question and answer remote or in person tools, which is great super teacher tools. They've been around for a long time. I love their stuff. Class tag is very similar if I remember right. Um, it's similar to Remind. It's a free tool and it, it does integrate great with Google tools. Another good one. New ed, I don't know the new EdTech Classroom one. Lots of tutorials which is awesome. The other group talked about K-12, uh, simple K-12. They had a lot of webinars this summer and they have a ton of free ones that are only a half hour. I'd usually just hit play and then work on something else and kind of listen to it like a radio show. Sapop.com. I love that all of these link to Google Classroom. So I'll be drawing on your resources. I'll come back to this as I'm building your courses moving forward because surprise, I haven't built them all yet. Um, I'm kind of figuring out what you need and what you already know and what you've been using because it makes sense to share what you guys already find to be useful. I love Classroom Screen. That's one of my favorite tools. It's free. You don't need a sign in. Um, it's easy to use. The Teacher Desmos for math. You guys are awesome. Look at all this stuff coming in here. Just about all of them, Rhonda, you're asking about if they're free, like Edpuzzle is free. They offer, a lot of them offer paid versions that allow you to do more, maybe to have a better dashboard or to have more memory or to have more features. Um, generally, the free version is enough to at least figure out, you know, if this is a tool that's amazing or just good enough. If it's a tool that you're going to use once in a while and mix it up a lot, usually the free version is enough. 
Um, we have been talking about, there's so many out there, so we've been talking about so many of them to figure out what makes sense for all of us. We haven't come to any decisions yet, trying to watch the, the budget to see what we can do, but there's, there's so many tools out there, so I'm so glad that you guys are sharing. The rubric feature for Google Classroom. I haven't tried that. Carrie, do you want to share now that I can see your name typing in there? Yeah, so I watched one of those Simply K-12 things and it was just about setting up a rubric and you can do it mostly as just like a score sheet. So you know how like if you're grading something in Google Classroom, you can't write on it. So it's like you sometimes feel like you have to, like you can't, you can make comments, but it's hard to like keep tally up a score if you were doing something like that. So it lets you, um, like I didn't even do it really as a rubric. I just said like part 1A is worth three points, part 2, or you know, 1B is worth four points. And then you can assign all or some of those points and put comments in each, for each question. The only drawback is that you have to create the rubric before you like assign the assignment. I don't think you can do it after it's already in there. I don't think. But they also talked about, and I can't remember why this was, but like creating a, um, like a, um, like a dummy Google Classroom that you could just like put pending assignments in if you're working on them, but you don't want to put them in Classroom yet. And I don't remember why they said that, but I think it was in the same thing. So maybe it was like if you had the assignment already, but you didn't want to assign it yet because you were still doing the rubric or something like that. Or to try out the rubric. I, I don't remember why that was, but I'll see if I can remember. I didn't take notes. I know what but this it did work really well um, to do to do that because I always feel like I have to write it down on a piece of paper so that I can keep track of like how many points I'm giving things as I'm going through. Thank you. That's awesome. And yeah, our brains are pretty full right now. So trying to remember what's what. A little tricky. <laughs> awesome. I'm going back through to see if I missed anything. If you shared something on the screen or you typed it and you want to tell more about it, go ahead and jump in, especially if it's a tool that you've been using all along and now you're like, ooh, this will work great in our new brave new world. But we also have time if you have questions with whether they're questions regarding the brainstorming or not. It's I'm going to be trying to end all of these classes. I think I already said this. Um, but I'll try to end all of them by 10 minutes of the hour so that you have time to transition to whatever's next in your life. And that was kind of like the therapy hour. You pay for an hour, but you only get 50 minutes. Um, so I'll be done teaching or done having you do whatever it is by 10 minutes of the hour. So we're about eight minutes from 10 minutes of the hour. <laughs> Listen to my magic math. So if you have questions in general, especially if they pertain just to the high school, you're welcome to throw those out too. Not that I have answers for everything, but it's good to know the questions. And I'm finally getting better at managing my list of people, my chat, all of your pictures of sharing my screen. Does anybody have ideas, like we were talking um, earlier about assessments, like if you were gonna give a classroom test, like, I just am having trouble with that. Anybody else have maybe, trouble? Maybe it would, have to be, <laughs> it would have to be more um, like performance task based, mm -hmm. like more not necessarily projecty, but um, not quite so. Uh, Testy. Yeah. <laughs> I think for, for tests, we might only be stuck with doing them like Fridays and Mondays. So you get, you know, you catch one, one half your kids on Friday and the other half on Monday. Yeah, except you're going to have the kids that are all remote. Like I thought the same thing, Dan, but yeah. then there are going to be some kids that are completely remote. Yeah. 
Well, the other option is kind of like give them a page at a time or a question at a time almost, which is going to be really tedious, but yeah. you know, like, okay, give me back your answer. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. If you want to cheat, it's going to be a lot easier. That's for sure. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I think no matter what you create, they're going to be able to cheat. Cause even if you do something like a, a live Q and a type of thing, whether you're using like a, not a puzzle, but like Pear Deck or Nearpod or any of those, they still can be texting each other. Maybe right. not the one sitting in front of you, but anyone lucky enough not to be sitting in front of you will have more opportunity. So yeah, more and more of those ideas as they come forward, share them because I know that that's something that I've heard a couple of times now, whether it's here or in other um, forums. I know like the kids have told me in math too that they have like, you know, there's all kinds of apps that they just type in the question and gives right. them the answer. So. Yeah, well, if you have graph something, you just throw it on Desmos and like, oh yeah, there it is. Yeah. And somebody put on the MashP message that app that you take a picture of whatever math problem you have and it solves it. Yeah. For the, par <laughs> for the parents, so that the parents could help the kids. I love the MashP <sighs> message. Oh. Yeah, some things are going to be a challenge, that's for sure. Well, a lot of things are, but some more than others. I'm not sure if I missed this, but I'm wondering if people have thought about how, like, are you planning to Zoom your kids on a big clear touch where we are just on your personal computer so that the students at home just see you? Or I don't know if people have a plan. We have to be careful about zooming on the clear touch. Yeah. Then, like, I was wondering about that too. Like, if you zoom on the clear touch, it's facing the students in the classroom. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. those students I, are being recorded. And then, what if they're not doing something they're supposed to be doing? And now you've zoomed it to everybody. But wouldn't it be the same if they were in class? You know what I mean? Doing something they weren't supposed to be doing. But now it's recorded for prosperity. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, they're all going to be recorded all the time. I mean, all the kids that are Zooming remotely are going to be, they're going to be recorded. So, I mean, it's all kids that are, like, it's, they're going to be recorded. I have that same concern. That's one of my trepidations about breakout groups. Um, but, you know, I'm, you know, unchaperoned breakout groups. But, um, I mean, that's something that, I mean, hopefully you think that the kids doing something not great on Zoom, that they would recognize that they were on camera and they would stop because now there's evidence of it. When you write it up, you could just attach the little Zoom link to it uh, for Ed and Rhee would look at. I yeah, I, I mean, I'm not sure how much of a part of the class the kids at home are supposed to be feeling. So if they never see the other kids in the class, I, I don't know. I was hoping to have even my kids who are in the class try to Zoom so that I could do a breakout group with mm -hmm. one kid in the class and one kid at home, home to partner up that way because the kids yeah. in the class can't sit next to each other and work together. But right, yeah. Right, that, that scenario, we've talked about that too. You'll want to, I would test all of this this week, yeah. you know, together with four or five people and have one teacher, a couple of students that are remote and a couple of people sitting in front, whatever. I'm wondering how the sound is gonna work. At the high school, you guys have way more kids with headphones, so it might not be an issue, but when you start to, like if I were to open up Zoom on the same thing that we're on on another device, we'd get that feedback sound. So you'd have to mute one or mute the other. So that, Sean and I have talked about that a lot too. So you'll have to kind of figure that out. I'll be figuring it out when I start teaching in person tomorrow and I'll share whatever I learn. Um, I would be, if it were me, I would spend a little bit of time at the beginning where the Brady Bunch view is facing the classroom and everybody can see each other and you know wave or whatever they want to do. Yeah. But for the rest of the yeah, get it out of the way so that there is that face to face. But then when you're ready to get down to business, I'd be having just my face in front of the Brady Bunch 
when I need to. I might even carry my laptop around with me or my Chromebook around with me if I, well, I know you can't get close to them. I don't know how much walking space you have, but <laughs> I would be carrying them around with me basically so that they can hear what I'm doing. But even that, I don't know. I'm going to try it tomorrow and I might be crazy. I probably am anyway, but. Susie, are we getting, I know this has been mentioned, but uh, I'm not in a ton of detail. Are, we, are the teachers getting new Chromebooks? Yes, yeah, so there have been a lot of different orders for Chromebooks right now among tech directors. The, the big conversation is where are the Chromebooks? Like if you were to go to Walmart or Best Buy or anywhere right now, they'd open their cabinets, they're empty. Everybody's trying to get them. So we put in an order, um, by we I mean Sean, back in the spring. So I think March or April when we knew what we were getting for one-to-one -one for KCC before all of this really ramped up. Then a couple more orders have gone in since then. So I don't know the ETAs on all of them. Sean would have a better idea of that. I wouldn't be holding your breath for it to come very quickly. But yes, when it comes, you will have a brand new Chromebook and a new charger and all that good stuff. So hopefully it will be sooner than later. Um, I think that they probably have people making them by the dozens as quickly as they can. It's, it's been quite the conversation among tech directors. I don't know about you guys, but I haven't had a lot of like luck with my zooming from my Chromebook. That it, it, I often just get complaints about the you know the quality. quality of the video or the quality of the audio or whatever. So planning on doing that, maybe try it first. Yeah, especially the older Chromebooks. I'm gonna try and put together a document that basically talks about the economics of your like your how much bandwidth you're using. So being able to narrow that down as best you can. Like I know the Brady Bunch view uses more bandwidth than the regular one speaker at a time view. Anything that's constantly changing on, even me moving my hands, my computer has to process that. Where Trish Donovan sitting so quietly and nicely right now, the computer doesn't have to pay attention to her unless she smiles. So maybe she should put her mask on. So the more that the computer has to process, the more it's going to bog it down. And then you multiply that times however many people are on your Zoom or in your meeting and that's going to slow everything down. So we're trying to come up with as many um, recommendations as we can for you and for your students who are at home so that the connection is a little bit better. The Chromebooks are, they're, they're great little workhorses, but they're not designed to run a bunch of stuff all at the same time. So like I said, it's kind of, not to interrupt you, I'm still going to be here all the way till two o'clock, but I'm not going to say anything amazing until then. Um, to the next group coming in at two o'clock is the question group for their Q&A, but I'm here for another 10 minutes, but I won't, I won't cry if you leave now. <laughs> Sean Maroney mentioned the other day to me that like I've noticed everyone's been, been um, sharing their screen with the videos and so we've all been watching them together but he was saying using these new landing pages to link the video in your landing page or so that the kids even in the classroom are viewing the videos on their own and the students at home are viewing the videos on their own and then coming back for a discussion will help with it instead of everybody trying to watch the one video that they are sharing as a host of a zoom to try right. not to be streaming video through Zoom. Right, so like when I shared the Apollo 13, I'm trying to stream it, but I'm also trying to have it go across all to all of you, or it might be better for each of you to watch it on your own device instead of me trying to stream it. It's almost like streaming it twice. And I think that's what he mostly means, um, being able to do it that way. So. There, there are many different ways that I'm sure we will play around with this and, um, you know, one day of the week, it might be amazing and the same strategy the next day might crumble. We're going to, we're going to learn a lot. Well, that's where, um, that's where the flipped classroom comes in handy. If you've made the video, te you know, did the teaching video and assigned it for homework, homework for everyone, then when your first 15 minutes of your class, your Zoom meeting is answering questions and, you know, refining their learning and then set them off on their independent task where they don't have to be on the Chromebook. Right. That helps. It does. And Trish, you should know that video you is cooler than you you. 
you could put a video up of you teaching whatever it is and the next day have you teach the same thing live in person and the kids are gonna they're gonna like the video version of you better well it's it's way more fun when my dog is there and barks while i'm teaching or i trip yeah. over her things like that but, yep you know, yep way cooler so, yeah, and it's like having an extra Trish in the room. If they're busy watching video you on the screen, you have a chance to well, walk around. You have a chance to wave across the room at your students or take care of little fires, which is nice too. I used to call it spinning the classroom because I couldn't watch the videos at home because I didn't have devices, but we'll get Susie, there. do you know if, like, if you hook up your document camera to your computer, mm -hmm. can you then like screencastify that? Yeah, you should be able to if you when you're in screencastify there should be a setting somewhere that says like what camera are you using and you're going to tell it that you're using the doc cam yeah because i'm just worried like trying to type math stuff is like super hard is it really yeah <laughs> so i'm like hoping i can just like write it instead of i i do when i screencast i have my my projector on and it has the pen on the board and as I use the pen right on the board. So is it? It's not okay. the document, it's not like the Elmo, it's the actual camera. Okay. Of, uh, my, of mine won't turn that on is. right at the moment, so I can't no. really try it out yet, so. You are having a tough time. I'll just be down here under my desk. <laughs> Yeah, you and me both. I'm going to stop the recording. <laughs> I remember where I found that before. Oh my goodness, where are the tools? There they are. I just opened up Mercury Reader. Okay, stop. Recording. Thank you, Susie. You're very welcome. Thank you for being patient with me. I'm just figuring things out too. <laughs> 